Welcome to another edition of Inside North Attleboro Schools. My name is Susan Cullen. I'm the superintendent of schools. And if you've been watching any of these programs at home, then you'll see that I show different things that are happening in the school district that the community may not know about. Today, I am interviewing three young ladies that actually did an amazing, uh, what do you call it, uh, reach out to add some kindness, a random act of kindness. It happened at the high school. You may have heard about it on TV. It was actually captured by the news. You also may have read about it in the Sun Chronicle. Today, I have with me the three ladies that I think are going to be known as the Sticky Note Girls. And what these ladies did is they decided to write out, and we'll talk about the numbers, but amazing numbers of sticky notes and place them on the lockers of every single high school student in North Attleboro High. When children came in the morning, when all the kids came in in the morning, they all had sticky notes on their lockers. And those sticky notes said wonderful, kind words. And it spread this feeling of kindness across the school, I'd say across the community, and I think actually across the nation. So let me introduce to you the three sticky note ladies. Nicole, Rachel, and Sierra. Would you tell me a little bit about yourselves, please? Nicole, let's talk about you. Um, what would you like to know? <laughs> well, what grade are you in, Nicole? I'm a freshman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you been living in North Attleboro your whole life? Pro yeah, most of it. Most of it? Before yeah. that, did you come from any other town? Uh, Providence came from Providence when you were young? Yeah. Okay, so you've been here pretty much, how many years would you say? Um, like 10. 10 years. And what elementary school did you go to? Falls. You went to Falls Elementary School. Okay, thank you. Rachel? Um, well, I'm a freshman mm -hmm. and I moved here from Maryland in fourth grade mm -hmm. and I went to Martin. You went to Martin School. Okay, and Sierra? Um, I'm a freshman. I've lived here for a few years now. Um, yeah, from Ohio. You're originally from Ohio. Yeah. So the three of you became friends how? Um, Sierra and I have been friends since band pretty much, mm -hmm. since like last year. Rachel I've known since fourth grade through CCD. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sierra was in my English class in like seventh grade. So when you came here seventh grade, so yeah. we just... When you moved in in seventh grade. Yeah. So. Together, you came up with this idea of the sticky notes. Will you tell the folks at home as to what that was all about? Um, well, I was watching the news the other day. I don't know why, but I was. <laughs> and um, there was a lot of bad stories on the news, and I realized how the news is really depressing. And I didn't want to make it on the news at first, or like at all. But I just decided we should do something nice, maybe for a town, mm -hmm. and I didn't think it'd spread. So I was talking to Rachel that day and we, I told her my idea of doing something nice and she's like, why don't we do post-it notes because that's what she saw on a website. Tell us a little bit about that, Rachel. What did you see on the website? Um, well, the website was Tumblr. Mm -hmm. Okay. on there quite a lot, probably more than I should be, but mm -hmm. um, I was on there and I saw this thing and like at one high school these two kids had like committed suicide. and these kids went around and posted like you're important or you're needed on sticky notes mm -hmm. on lockers just to remind the other kids at school that they were important and I felt like that's something that not a lot of people hear these days but people should be hearing that right. and so if we wanted to do something nice well why not like leave compliments on people's lockers to make them feel good about themselves. And what were you so how long did it take you to write out these sticky notes? Uh, depended on the person. Mm -hmm. Together we took us three hours, but we weren't even close to being done. Mm -hmm. So then took each of, like, depending on how much you wrote. Mm -hmm. But we all had 400 sticky notes each. 400 mm -hmm. sticky notes. Yep. Where yep. did you get all the ideas for what you wrote on the sticky notes? Um, well, a lot of them we came up with, but like some, but like we'd sit there and we'd go like, like when you look for a compliment and stuff, and there were some pretty funny ones out there mm -hmm. that we wrote, and um, so either online or just from our own minds. Were there some that were your favorites? Yes. Can you share? Yes. Sierra, what was your favorite? Um, a couple of your favorite ones. Um, one of my favorites was You Have an Unparalleled Beauty, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. another one was Your Smile is Perfect, and a another one was don't be sad, you, your smell makes everyone else happy, so.
Neat. Rachel? Um, I don't know, my favorite that I wrote, I wrote some of these really often, but um, Stay Gold, personally, The Outsider is my favorite movie and book. Um, you're Cuter Than a Build-A-Bear. That, that one just makes you feel good. <laughs> feel and then, good. Um, you're a cutie patootie with a really rad booty. <laughs> that one was, <laughs> I liked that one. That's great. Nicole? Um, one of mine was You Don't Need Makeup, Makeup Needs You. Mm -hmm. I liked some people watch the Olympics because that happens once every four years, but I like talking to you because meeting someone as special as you only happens once in a lifetime. That's great. That's great. Now, did you get nervous that you were running out of ideas? Yeah. yeah towards the end. Mm -hmm. Towards so the end. Mm. And so how many days did you do this? Did it take mm -hmm. a week? Um, did you put all those hours in? Well, we met on a Thursday, <coughs> and then we... we it's, yeah, like about a week. Weekend, so, yeah. About, it took you about a week to really finish yeah. it. And then yeah. how did you get them on the lockers? Um, we basically waited till every, well, most kids left school. Mm -hmm. And then started, and then the junior hallway. And then I joined them, and we pretty much tackled the sophomore and freshman area. Mm -hmm. And then we all handled the senior hall. You, you did the seniors last. Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> yep. all right. And, and folks at home, this is the first time we've been using the new tu TV studio at the high school. We actually have an, an audience here that are high school students that are taking TV classes, learning how to use the equipment, et cetera. So this is, this is the first time we've been able to do it here. And the nice thing about this is that the folks that are out here, you can't see it at home, but we have a whole class that's watching this happen. And before we did this show, we asked them if any of these sticky notes made it to their lockers, and they have told us that they did. Can you remember some of the ones that they, the, some of the ideas that they were sharing with us before the oh. show? Um. Yep. One of them said that you do everything amazing. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome. mm -hmm. And um, then one of his friends said that we've done nothing but build him up, or et cetera. So it's making. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's what it's about. We were trying. You're trying to make people feel good, and it seems like it's really resonating. Have you heard it resonating anywhere else? Yeah. yeah. Can you share? Um, well, my brother told me that his school Roosevelt copied it, and I felt really good. Mm -hmm. And then. And then my youngest sister told me that it traveled up to Amvet. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my gosh, it was just so great to see like even the smaller kids and they're wanting to be nicer. It was really nice. It makes and like a big the difference. kids were posting like encouraging messages for the MCAS mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. And that was really cute. Like you can make it through the test. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So did you specifically place these on any lockers that you knew or is it all random or? Um, well, personally, like, I think I was the only one who knew mm -hmm. three specific lockers, mm -hmm. and those were um, my friend Abby and her older brother Matt and then his friend Dylan. So I just knew those three lockers. And, and your own. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, we but we, yeah. Like, like, we were, we didn't want to write our own. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We, so we, we kind just, of exchanged. Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> so you didn't know what it was going to be until you yeah. saw, yeah. okay. And what did you have on your locker? Um. Um, <laughs> it was wow. like, the universe without you isn't as beautiful, something huh. like that, yeah. How about yours? Do you remember, Rachel? Um, mine was, you make people smile every day, don't change that. Thank yeah. you, Sierra, that you was beautiful. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and what was oh. on your locker? Mine was, you're beautiful like a flower. You're beautiful like a flower, that's yeah. wonderful. So, what did your parents think about this? Um, my dad told me that he was like really proud of me, you know, of like doing something to like make people smile. Cause like my thing was, it, it's like in the morning, it's like no one seems to like smile that much. I was like, oh, and so we like, it's like seeing them all smile at once was just such like new feeling, and it felt so great. So he was really happy for me. So. What about your parents? Um, my mom wouldn't shut up about how excited <laughs> she was, but um, it was like she was, she just kept saying how proud of me she was mm -hmm. and stuff, and it was really kind of adorable. She's a nice <laughs> mother. <laughs> uh, my mom was, she was okay about it. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what we were doing at first until like we all hung out. My dad didn't like the idea as much, mm -hmm. but I don't really care what he <laughs> thinks, so <laughs> it's all good. It wasn't like you were doing this to please your parents. Yeah. It was yeah. something yeah. that you just yeah. randomly thought of together right. and wanted to yeah. just go and do. This was for the school, not to you know, mm -hmm. have someone say, you know, good job, how about that? Yeah. It was for the school. Now, you really wanted to stay anonymous, didn't you? Yes. How come <laughs> you wanted to stay anonymous? Because, because oh, no, you no, can go. Because, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, if it's anonymous, it's like, 
then that kind of adds to the whole like random act of kindness. Mm -hmm. It's like not like deliberate, it's like random. So like to me that made more sense to be anonymous, mm -hmm. but I guess someone decided to tweet it, so. And a lot of people would think that we're seeking attention for it, which right. we didn't want to at all. And because we just wanted to spread kindness, mm -hmm. but not through attention seeking, mm -hmm. just because of we wanted to. Just to do it. Because yeah. I feel like people know, like, if it's anonymous, people do know that you're not trying to get something from it. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing. We weren't trying to get anything from it. So, like, that was kind of the benefit of being anonymous. So somebody saw you and tweeted it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then how did you feel after it was you were found out? It was like, oh, mixed like, yeah. mixed emotions. Because yeah. yeah. it wasn't intentional. We yeah. weren't supposed to be found out. Right. It was, it was okay, but it's like the whole goal of being anonymous kind of like failed. We're like, yeah. Uh, right. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then what happened after that, after they found who you were? Um, we got called down yeah. to the principal's yeah. office. People said, you know, thanks. Some people like stared at us and said, oh, they did it. It was just, mm -hmm. oh, like, <laughs> yeah, right. You didn't want to have to yeah, be like, They're like, you guys are so cute. It's like, well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> and then you've been interviewed by a couple of new news stations. What yeah. stations have called and interviewed? Um, Channel, Channel 7. Was it mm -hmm. NBC or no, something? ABC no, six. ABC 6. ABC 6. Yeah. And yeah. then other newscasters, yeah. like, took it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Took it and then played it over yeah. again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So now, now, not only have you been found out in the school and the community, and the state, but it could be across the country. You just never know. You started to say that one of the reasons that you did this was that you had watched or you had read something about some kids that had committed suicide and mm -hmm. then they, somebody wanted to send out with the sticky notes. This is almost like a proactive thing before any tragedy. You're just trying to get this going to keep the kindness rolling. Have you heard any other things that have happened because of this than any other besides the sticky notes at other schools? Have you heard people be kinder or nicer to each other? Have you seen anything well, like this or felt it even? I mean, I know that my friend Matt, he was one of the lockers that I knew, he said that he saw people smile that he's never seen smile before. Huh. Hmm. And like my friend, my other friend, he said that like the note that he got was something that he still keeps up in his locker because he really needs the reminder every day that he's like important and stuff. So yeah, so it just resonates with people. It does. And, they, and I'll tell you, if you were to go up and down the halls now, you'd still see an awful lot of those sticky notes. And from the audience that we have here today, some folks said that they kept them. They either keep them in their books or they have them on their lockers or some of them have brought them home. So it's a story that I think is going to be remembered for a very, very, very long time. So what do we want to have happen next? Besides going to the State House that you have on Thursday, you're going to be meeting some folks then, correct? Well, from yep. the Staples corporate guy, we got 7,200 altogether sticky notes. So why would we waste them? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we were thinking next to do a children's hospital. Oh. Yeah. Or maybe Madonna Manor or downtown. That too. Oh, that would be very nice, too. Oh, that would be very nice. If you need help from me on my end, I'll help you do whatever you need. We'll get you there on a bus or something. <laughs> Maybe you'll have other folks that want to help you. Would you be interested in getting a group of kids to do this with yeah, you? Yeah, a lot of people want to do it. They now. do. Yeah. There's a lot of people now that they like know about it. They'd be like, yeah, I'll help you. It's uh, like, so you could do like a whole sticky yeah. note day and yeah. get Hold it out there. Makes light work. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. Any other ideas or things that you're thinking? Um, well, I know that like I was thinking because of the positive reaction to it like from the students. Um, I was thinking I might like save mine and we'd still have some left over to do it for another project, but I might save mine and then do it again so that people can still have that day of like extreme kindness. Yeah. But like I don't know. I don't want to like do it, and people think that I want to hear on the news again because I don't. But it's like I want. I still want to do it so people can have something to smile about. Because you want to continue to spread the kindness, yeah. and that you know you're actually seeing that kindness spreads more kindness, and it's a chain reaction of kindness. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to some of the things that we've done in the past few years, which were friends of Rachel. You know, um, you may want to talk a little bit about that. Remember, how many years ago did we have the speakers come um, in? Was it two, 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 two years ago? ago. Uh, share with that for uh, the folks at home that may not know anything about that program we had. Um, well, Rachel's Challenge, it was about the Rachel Joyce Scott girl at uh, mm -hmm. Columbine mm -hmm. High School killed, but um, she had this, like, vision for the world that she could change it just with acts of kindness. Yeah. And so she kind of had this message, like, just one act of kindness can start a chain reaction. And I think that had a huge impression on, like, everyone who saw it, so. 
very powerful to think and it really does combat all the negativism which is what you were saying that you one of the reasons you were thinking to do this is that all they show on the news are horrible stories mm -hmm. and I think so, well not all of it but many times um, it's rare that we have a story that actually is a feel-good story and this was one that actually touched an awful lot of people um, for a variety of reasons and I will tell you as a superintendent of schools if you're gonna if, if the school is going to be highlighted in the news of any way you want it to be a positive message because you know the negative implications are, are, are worse so I thank you for all of that you did not do it intentionally for that but you've put North Attleboro on the map for a very very positive um, you know rewarding thing and that that to me and for the school committee because we talked about it at a school committee meeting is very very beneficial for not only us and not only you and the students here but for the the general community so I thank you for that so Rachel's challenge was a couple years ago we're continuing on to spread this word of kindness what next after the state house what are you going to say at the state house do you have any idea mm -hmm. I uh, didn't know. know we had to speak. Oh, maybe you were. <laughs> <laughs> well, they might put you at a table and have highlighted, you know, lights on you like you're doing right now with an audience that you didn't know was going to be there. Mm. You'll be fine. They're doing fine, don't you think? Yes, yes, I think so too. Okay. It's sort of like an anti-bullying mm -hmm. kind yeah. of thing, though, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, when you and I, when we all talked last week a little bit about, um, you know, this to prepare for this show, you shared with me about the, the fact that there are things that we could do a better job with as far as spreading the message of kindness and actually getting people to pay more attention to how whatever it is that you do to other people may, may re make people react in a different way. You want to share anything that we talked about a little bit um, with that? We did talk about like personally how bullying and racism would affect mm. us and like I think we felt that bullying isn't like a really addressed issue. Like, well, I mean, it's addressed, but like it's addressed by adults mm -hmm. and not by the kids who are actually being bullied. Mm -hmm. So we felt like if something was to be done about it, the kids had to speak up and mm -hmm. the adults can't just say, oh, don't do this because they really, bullying wasn't as big of an issue back when they were in high school. So. It seems the, the bullying word has, has really escalated and it's become mm -hmm. something that, you know, um, now there's a law about it, etc. So it really is about kindness, though, of do unto others as you would like them to do to you. Anything? Um, I, th I just think that, that we need to, like, to stress the fact it's like just because it's like not offensive to you that doesn't mean someone else can't take it like really personally mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah that needs to be like talked about more you yeah. have to really really communicate that out yeah but even really communicating people are just like oh it's just another thing mm -hmm. it's okay we can still do it mm -hmm. but when really it's affecting all of us like even the kids who are the bullies it's affecting them it's they just can't see it so how do we get inside of this culture and change that in a way that to make people more aware, uh, to make people realize that, that words can really hurt? Um, I think we need to do a better job of that. And I will tell you that there are some things that are going to be on the horizon. I've spoken with the principal here, Mr. Holcomb, and the assistant principal, Joe Scazzaro, who happens to be in the audience. You're, he's in charge of the freshman group, so he's here to support you ladies today. Um, we will be planning some things, some events moving forward to really address this issue um, that I think we really need to look closely at and, and think of things we can do proactively instead of reactively. So all of this, the sticky note mission has actually had this happen as well. And I'm, I'm just very, very proud of, of what you've done. And I have a funny feeling that we won't know how you impacted everybody. We, we're not going to know how, how wonderful this may have been to an individual who is really having a bad day. But I will tell you that it has become public, and we're not going to let this just go to slip away. We've got to build upon it and make it even better than, than what you even thought, I'm sure. So we've spoken a lot about the sticky notes. And there are other things that people can do to get involved to really try to change this culture. What are some of the things that you guys are involved in besides, uh, you mentioned band, you may want to talk a little bit about that, but are there any other clubs or activities that help to dovetail into this mission of spreading kindness? 
Sorry. Um, I participate in SCAR, SAD, and North Leeds East. Um, North What's SCAR? Because folks at home might not know what this is about. Well, SCAR, it stands for Student Coalition Against Racism. Mm -hmm. And we also do things like to inform people about like different stereotypes and like how that can like affect someone else. Mm -hmm. So it basically like shows people like, like the, the other side of receiving it. And for me personally, it's really been like an eye opener. Like, like some things that I didn't even know mm -hmm. were offensive. It's like I learn about, so like mm -hmm. it's like that helps me grow like as a person. Mm -hmm. So I really, really love Scar. It, it, it's like it's fun. It teaches you, but but it's like a really like fun environment and friendly. It's and Mrs. Cobble is great. So it's really, really it's a really good club to join. I love it. Now that club has been in existence for quite some time, yeah. hasn't it? How many years? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I just know that it started a long time ago. A long ago. time ago, <laughs> yeah. and it's been something that's still in place. I know at yeah. one point there were almost 100 kids that ran that club. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and it's probably a club that we want to keep continuing to grow. So it sounds like that overlaps into the whole mission of kindness. Yeah. What about SAD? You guys were involved in SAD too. Can you talk about what that acronym means? Um, well, I'm not personally involved in it, but I remember doing a class, um, Heritage Day, for it. Mm -hmm. And it was like Students Against Destructive Decisions. Yeah. So it's like, yo, oh, don't drink and drive and all that. But I feel like it can also lead to good things, like teaching good things, mm -hmm. like aside from stuff that is common sense. It's like they actually show the consequences for things, not just say don't do it. It's like they show you why. So Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like, not just barking it at you, but, but saying, listen, here's what happens, and here's what actually happens like when you do this. So, like, it's like they like, explain it in depth, and not just you know, say, don't do it. They kind of say, why well, shouldn't do it. So OK. All right, so it gives you more information, and right. then, and, and then it empowers yeah. you to make better decisions. Right. Is that what that's all about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, and what was the third thing that you were mentioning? North um, meets East. North, North meets, meets East. East. Yeah. So what's that about? It's like, well, there's a Chinese class mm -hmm. at um, this high school, and then the teacher, Miss Chong, mm -hmm. she um, she organized this club called the North Meets East Club, and basically it just kind of educates the members about the culture of mm -hmm. China and mm -hmm. other Asian countries, and it's really fun to participate in. So you learned something about China. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've learned how to do certain activities, learned about like dances mm -hmm. and traditional yeah. things. Yeah. And Nicole, are you involved in that one too? Uh, no, I'm in GSA. What's which that? Is the Gay Straight Alliance. Uh huh. And um, I just started pretty much, but I wanted to do it before, but I'm doing it now. Mm -hmm. And we have a day of silence coming up. So basically, what the day of silence is is you don't mm -hmm. talk for to show people how hard it is to not to like come out of the closet, like if you're mm -hmm. gay, bi, mm -hmm. transgender, or mm -hmm. if you're straight, but. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to keep those emotions in. Mm. So that's why when you do the day of silence, you, you can understand how people might feel about not being them who they are. So it's an example of, of trying to get somebody to live in someone else's shoes yeah. for a little bit to see what that would be like. It's kind you of know, I mean, we have such a changing uh, society. Uh, and I think that it, you're the young generation that's going to change the world. Uh, and it's going to be a global world. So having the opportunity to really look critically at diversity think, and, and welcoming and embracing and allowing all of that to happen, it sounds like those clubs have that common thread. Am I? Yeah, that's why it, I joined yeah. North Meets East. Yeah. That's why yeah. you joined North Meets East. Yeah, to learn about different cultures. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. That's why I like that's great, that's great. And we know that there are some things we can do with the culture right here in the high school and we're gonna try to, to move forward with that. So it sounds to me like you ladies might have in your mind, you may not, but you might have an idea of what you wanna be when you grow up. Are you planning on going to college? Yes. 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 All right, Most talk definitely. to me about that. What are you thinking right now? March, what is it, 21st? 24. 24, <laughs> I missed three days. March 24th, 2014. What are you thinking right now, Nicole? Um, well, I love music. Music's like a passion I have. So I want to be an audio engineer. And when I grow up, I want to have my own recording studio. Ah. So I can record music. And then I want to minor in music. Uh -huh. Yeah. I would either want to go to one of the UMass's or Berkeley. College. Berkeley College, which Berkeley? Where right, out in California? No, in Boston. Oh, in Boston. It's a music school. Ah, yeah. great, great. Wow. So, do, what do you play? Do you play any musical instruments? Now? Um, I play saxophone, ukulele, guitar, piano, and trombone. And are you in the band here? Yes. You are in the band here. Okay. 
Are you going on that trip to? No. Okay. All right. I heard it was a trip. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to be, Rachel? Um, I want to be an English teacher. Okay. And because, I mean, my eighth grade English teacher, she was like a really heavy influence on that. Huh. And I love to read and write, so I figured that would be a good profession for me. Mm -hmm. And um, for college, like, I hear that Bridgewater State is a really good, like, teaching mm -hmm. college, so I'm probably going to try and go there. Yeah. So. That's great. That's great. What about you, Sierra? Um, I'm not sure yet, but I love biology, so mm -hmm. I want to do something like science related because like that's like my best subject and I love it. So mm -hmm. something with science would be my hopeful future. Uh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, by all you know, and they all of actually each one of the the things that you're thinking are, are things that are going to be there in the future. Uh, music's not going to go anywhere. It's only going to get better, and we're going to get. We're going to be hopefully. Uh, hopefully, because a lot of the tunes are reoccurring in songs, so they say <sighs> soon that there will be no more music. Oh, really? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. there won't be anything new. Yeah, and so that's kind of like scary. But for now, it's all good. <laughs> Do you think that's true? Do you think there really could yeah. be no combination to I be able to I make? Yeah. I feel huh. like because a lot of people are reusing the same kinds of uh -huh. like tunes and beats in their songs. And yes, and a lot of music now, it's just, especially like lyrics wise, mm -hmm. there's no creativity, yeah. which I, yeah. but. I'm, I'm looking at the three of you and thinking, we've got a song here, like a lyric, <laughs> really, I mean, look, you got the English teacher that could write, you got the two musical talents. What do you play? What musical instrument do you play, Sierra? Clarinet. You play clarinet as well, okay. And I can't imagine that there wouldn't be an English teacher always being English teachers. Yeah. Right, and we're going to need to. I mean, the, the field of biology can expand into just about everything. Um, but there are going to be an awful lot of jobs when you guys come out of college that haven't even been created yet. Did you know that? I, I mean, mm -hmm. heard That's that. That's surprising. So. The world is changing so quickly. Yeah, that the, it's changing so quickly that your future, we can't, we don't, we can't even predict because it is a global economy, and what and there are so many changes that are happening all the time, and the world of technology has infiltrated everything. So for you three, as freshmen, it'll be interesting to do a recap as we go throughout the years to see where you are, see if things have changed a little bit, see if what you've done is starting this spark of kindness, which we're going to need in the world forever. If these sticky notes, I wonder how, th where, how this will keep, cap you can capitalize on it as we go through the next few years and even into your future as well. Neat. Neat. So, any closing remarks that you'd like to add? Just keep the kindness going. That was what we wanted to do. Just kind of keep a chain reaction of kindness going. Just a fraction of it can go such a long way. That's great. Um, like, think before you speak. I mean, it's think before you speak. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Well, folks at home, this concludes Another edition of Inside North Attleboro Schools. I hope you learned a lot. I had a wonderful time with these three ladies here today and um, hope you come back and watch another one. Thank you. Mm -hmm.